Hi guys! So if you've been doing IT for a while, you probably know not to use Telnet. But, but Telnet can still be really useful for troubleshooting. So I wanted to do a video on how you can still use Telnet in IT for troubleshooting purposes. So just keep watching and I'll show you different things you can do with it and different tricks that might make your job just a little bit easier. Okay. In addition to the troubleshooting features I like to use with Telnet, there's also some great fun stuff you can do with Telnet. Not that I recommend doing this very often, you should definitely not connect any servers using Telnet of course because it is that clear text, um, unencrypted network transmission it sends, network connection established. So if you Telnet in, it will send your username and password clear text. But that being said, there are some things you can do that don't require sending your password, at least not clear text. So one example is you tell it into a site and you can actually watch a Star Wars movie, which I thought was pretty cool. It's like an ASCII based, like moving um, characters that shows you the whole movie in a very cute way. So if you just tell it into the site shown on the screen, I'll put in the notes below as well. You go ahead and watch a cute little animated movie of uh, Star Wars. And I believe it's uh, episode four. So. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. I did speed it up here a little bit just for time's sake, but you can see RTD2 and um, a 3CPO here, and you know, you see a starship, so it's pretty cool. Some stormtroopers, there's Dark Vader. So if you go ahead and tell it in, you can actually watch the whole movie yourself. Um, super, super cute. This has been around for a long time. I remember seeing the site years and years ago. So go ahead and enjoy that. Next thing I want to take a look at is really more of the troubleshooting uh, aspect of how I use Telnet. And if you know what Telnet is, it's just an easy way of connecting a terminal connection, a command line connection to a system. So years ago, before SSH became mainstream, everyone would Telnet into their servers and do maintenance. But nowadays, it's really more useful for um, troubleshooting purposes. So you can be able to access a server and by default it goes to port 23, that's the Telnet port, but you can customize which port you're connecting to. And you can use Telnet to do a connection to pretty much any port. And I like to do this for checking if ports are having issues. So let's take a look at that. There are a few different ways you can use Telnet. You can access it via the Telnet um, prompt. So you can type in Telnet and you come up with a Telnet prompt. Or you can type it in on the command line on Linux shells. Um, pretty much always have Telnet built into the OS of Linux operating system. Um, you don't necessarily want to run a Linux, a Telnet server, but you can use a Telnet client to connect to other systems. So definitely don't run a Telnet server. But, um, and on Windows, you might need to install it. So if you're doing Telnet, the general format on the command line is Telnet, the server name, and then the port. If you don't specify a port, it just defaults to port 23. If you specify the port, you can do things like connect to web server on port 80, connect to a license server on any port, um, 27,000, or you can connect to mail servers on uh, outgoing mail servers on port 22 and send out an email. So it really depends on what you're doing. So here I'm doing connecting to port 80 for Yahoo or CNN here. And it's an easy way to check if I'm able to access, if I have network access on a command line to port 80 from my local computer. So again, I really like doing this for troubleshooting. If I have a server and I'm not sure if I'm able to access a certain port, I can do a quick telnet to the port and see if it's able to connect. For example, it says here connected to. If I'm able to connect to the port to see if it's answering any calls. That's an easy way, so it's an easy way to troubleshoot in case maybe the firewall's up, this might show a flag, or if the port's not allowing connections, or the port just doesn't respond at all. So it's different ways you can use Telnet to actually see what's going on in your network. So I've been finding it really useful forever. So a neat trick you do is connect to port 80 and use the HTTP um, headers calls such as get and actually pull off some websites so if you want to use get you can actually have the main page dumped so the html source code dumped to your screen so this is something you might do if again if you're testing something if you want to get the code dumped to a file you can do something like this if you just want to check the code from a web page you can do something like this uh, on port 80 on port 22 you can actually use it to send yourself or send out email. 
years ago, this was common practice for spammers to send out mass spam. You do via the command line, use Telnet, and if the outgoing mail doesn't require authentication, the mail server will just accept it, accept it and send it out. So it was an old hack back in the day. So here are examples: Telnet. I'm sending it to the connecting to the outgoing mail server for Gmail port 587. Gmail does require authentication, so I would have to pass it my encrypted, encrypted username and encrypted password for that to work. So that's really what you should do nowadays. You don't want mail servers being able to send out mail without authentication because you never know who's going to be connecting and sending out mass amount of spam if possible. The last thing I want to show you is a fun trick you can use Telnet, and that is to play a game of chess with somebody online. So there is, you can tell it to the server free chess.org and go ahead and enter a pool of people interested in playing some chess. So it's actually a fun, kind of cool trick. You want to be sure to connect to port 5000 when you do this. So you're going to come here, you can type in guest. And when you type in guest, it's going to log you in with a, it's a guest prompt. You can go in and make an account later. And then you can go ahead and it will start notifying you who's interested in playing a game. So I thought this was kind of fun if you wanted to play a game of chess. So, um, well, that's all I wanted to show you today. So I hope you guys enjoy Telnet and see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. And I'll see you guys next time. Subscribe and get updates. Bye.